Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. More than 20 years ago, the Kraft Foods Company introduced a wonderful new salad dressing, a superbly smooth, delicious-tasting salad dressing called Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip was so remarkably good that it soon became the most popular salad dressing ever created. Now Miracle Whip outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined, and good cooks everywhere depend on it to make their salads better tasting. To bring out the best in your salads, use the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Well, the family always has to make minor adjustments when relatives come to visit. But when a relative like Aunt Hattie arrives, it calls for major adjustments. After a week of such stern domination, the great Gildersleeve and Leroy find it difficult to keep smiling. Now, Leroy, it isn't that she'll be here forever. How do you know? She'll go back home sooner or later. Let's be cheerful. I'll wait till she leaves. Then I'll be cheerful. Now, my boy. She keeps the shades pulled down all day. I feel like I'm living in a coat closet. Well, I'm going to do something about this dark house. The idea. The shades pulled at high noon. Bertie! <laughs> uh, Bertie! Yeah, watch it, Unc. She hates noise. Yeah. You call me the scarce lead? Oh, quiet, Bertie. Yes, sir. You call me. Bertie, it's a little dark in here. I wonder if we shouldn't raise the shades. Well, that would be a good idea. Yeah, well, will you take care of it? Leroy, would you like to do it? Not me. Bertie, let's not pass the buck. Let's raise the shades. This is my house, you know. Yes, sir, but you ain't giving the orders. Oh. Yeah, I'll raise the shade. I'm not afraid of Aunt Hattie. Aren't you going to do it, Unc? Well, as Aunt Hattie says, no use fading the rugs. (laughs) No nerve, huh? It isn't that. I'll just raise it a few inches. Oop! (laughs) Slipped out of my hand. I think I'll go out and play. I think I'll hit for the kitchen. No, wait a minute. Both of you are exaggerating. You make it sound like Aunt Hetty's a terrible ogre. But, Unc. Doc Morton. Hello, Aunt Hetty. You have a good rest? Well, I did until people started shouting down here. Oh, sorry, Aunt Hattie. And for heaven's sakes, what's the shade doing up at the ceiling? Was that the awful racket? Yeah. Leroy, I explained to everybody that the hot sun fades rugs. I didn't do it. Bertie? Don't look at me. I'm innocent. Then uh, who could have done it? A big 220-pound elf? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Hattie, I was adjusting the shade, and it got away from me. Yeah, I'll pull it down again. That's more like it. Yeah. We'll put the shades up tonight. Tonight? Then everybody can see in. Well, I have no objection to anybody seeing what I do at night. Hmm. <laughs> There's nothing more heartwarming to the passing stranger than the happy family circle framed in the picture window. Who's happy? Uh, uh, Bertie, when you went to the grocery this morning, did you remember to get my yeast and yogurt? Yes, ma'am. You forgot it the other day. That'll never happen again. (laughs) Uh, Leroy, some children are playing in the back lot. Uh, Will you tell them to be quiet until 1.15? I'm napping. Right away, Aunt Hattie. And uh, Throckmorton, you keep your little pinkies off those window shades, or Aunt Hattie will spank... Well, right, Aunt Hattie. Now, you'd better finish your nap or you'll be cross tonight. Well, I I had to come down and straighten you people out. (laughs) Be cheerful, Unc. Like you say, she won't stay forever. I will see to that. Leroy. Yeah, Unc? 
step into the kitchen, will you? Okay. Bertie, close the door. Yes, sir. What's going on? While Aunt Hattie's still asleep, we're going to have a little council of war. Okay, I'll raid the icebox. Hey. Leroy, pay attention. No eating. Well, you said it was a council of war. And they say an army marches on its stomach. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, I know we're all fond of Aunt Hattie. Yeah? Oh, yes, sir. But we're also agreed that she has overstayed her visit. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, naturally, we want to be diplomatic about it. But we must let Aunt Hattie know she can't stay all summer. So we have to think of a plan. I can think better when I'm eating. Leroy. Bertie thought of her plan. Oh, yes, Bertie? Bertie decided if Aunt Hattie stays around, Bertie's going on an extended vacation. What? And leave us here to eat Aunt Hattie's eggplant boiled in seaweed? <laughs> Leroy, that's eggplant cooked with spinach. A very special recipe. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Bertie has an idea. Bertie thinks so, too. What I'm getting at is, we can tell Aunt Hattie we're all going on a vacation. Yeah? Bertie can go her way. You and I, Leroy, will go up to Clear Lake and fish. And Aunt Hattie can go home. Well, I know she wouldn't want to interfere with our vacations. Hey, Aunt, you're using your head. Yes, sir. Mr. Gilsley's got a brain. You, well... You know what you got, Mr. Gilsley? You got a brain. Yeah, thank you, Bertie. Can we leave right after school's out? Yeah, why not? Merritt Williger says I can take my vacation anytime I want. I've got everything under control at the water department. Oh, boy. That'll suit Bertie. Bertie's ready to head to the mountains and relax off the pine needle. Yeah, good, Bertie. <laughs> yes, sir. Instead of being needled by an attic, Bertie's going to relax on the pine needle. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Miss Gilsey, you know what Bertie's going to do? Yes, Bertie. That's right. Bertie's going to relax on the pine needle. <laughs> Ooh, I wish Bertie would be more quiet. Well, come on, Uncle. Let's go break the news to Aunt Hattie. Yeah, good idea. Rock Zeke and Haddock. Uh, thought you were resting? I was, but who can rest with all the racket? You, well, Bertie was just amused about something. About what? You, well... Uh, she's going on a vacation. Yeah. Splendid! It's a good idea for her to go while I'm here. We have our little conflicts in the kitchen, so I'd love a free hand. Well, there won't be any cooking to do, Aunt Hattie. Why not? Well, as a matter of fact, Leroy and I will be going on our vacation at the same time. Yeah, Clear Lake. We're going to rent a cabin, huh? Yes, indeed. Well, in that case, I'll go along with you and do the cooking. Hey. <laughs> what? Well, it wouldn't be a vacation if you didn't have somebody to cook for you. Oh, grown. No, oh, Aunt Hattie. We like to rough it. Yeah, the rougher the better. Yeah. We'll be fishing all day, eating out of cans. Rock Martin, Leroy is a growing boy. He needs a balanced meal. Well, true. I'll but... not have little Leroy eating out of cans, like a goat. But I want to eat like a goat. <laughs> I will go and do the cooking. Yeah, well, of course, these plans are just tentative, Aunt Hattie. I have a lot of work to do at the office. I... May not be able to get away until later. <laughs> Probably after you've gone home. Yeah. When are you leaving? Well, I will never leave when I'm needed. And I uh, may not get away in, until August. <laughs> That's all right. I'll stay. <laughs> <laughs> Stop in Peavy's, pick up some cigars, and go on to the office tonight. And I'd rather work nights than have Aunt Hattie breathing down my neck at home. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this evening? You know, give me a handful of cigars. Yeah? I thought your Aunt Hattie made you give up cigars. Only around the house. I can smoke tonight. I'll be at the office. Oh, have work tonight? Well, yeah, let's say I prefer to. Yeah, I know what you mean. Seems I always have a lot of work to do at the pharmacy when Mrs. Peavy's mother comes to visit. Yeah, you just want to stay away from the house. <laughs> I'm very fond of Mrs. Peavy's mother. That's because she seldom comes to stay. 
she would if I didn't send Miss Peely over there. Yeah, I like to save Mother Hawkins the trip. Oh, sure. As a matter of fact, Miss Peavy's visiting her now. Well, care to go bowling? I don't have to go to the office. I'd like to, but I have to go home at 9 o'clock and feed the parrot. <laughs> Does he have to be fed at 9 o'clock? If I don't, he'll tell on me. <laughs> you blabbermouth. <laughs> hey, there's your boss peeping in the door. What? Good evening, Peavy. Well, hello, Master Williger. Gildersleeve. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Spending the evening at the soda fountain? You well. I thought this is where you spend most of the day. <laughs> you now, Mr. Mayor. I'll take a package of these razor blades, Peavy. Well. Well, I thought all of us employees gave you an electric razor last Christmas. I still need these. I may be shaving some employee's salary if he doesn't spend more time at the office. Zoink. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve's on his way to the office tonight. Uh, aren't you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. P.V., did Gildersleeve pay you to make that statement? No, but if he wants to, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just telling P.V. I plan to spend the whole evening at the office. Commissioner, whom are you trying to impress? Uh, nobody. nobody. I expect to be at the office nearly every night. His Aunt Hattie's living with him now. <laughs> Who? Uh, frankly, Mr. Mayor, I have relative troubles I'd rather not talk about. Uh, <clears throat> I understand. Well, I must get home before I have relative troubles. Oh, do you have relatives at home? Mrs. Terwilliger. <laughs> it is very funny, Mr. Mayor. It is not. <laughs> Goodbye, Mayor. Goodbye. I can never tell when the mayor's kidding. <laughs> he wasn't kidding about shaving somebody's salary. Yeah. No harm in letting him know I'm going to work tonight. No, I know. It's a cinch I'm not going home and sit with Aunt Hattie. <laughs> <laughs> it's no laughing matter. You don't know what we put up with. Shades drawn. We practically have to tiptoe around the house. She doesn't like company. My, my aunt is social, is she? Say, TV, we've been friends a long time. Would you like to help me get rid of Aunt Hattie? Oh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve, I... Well, all right, all right. You don't want to accommodate a good customer. I'll take my business elsewhere. Well, what did you have in mind? Well, it just occurred to me that with Mrs. Peavy out of town, you could come over and stay at my house for a few days. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're not that good a customer. <laughs> No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just think this thing through. With Mrs. Peavy away, where do you get your meals? Here at the pharmacy. Yeah, you can't live on vitamin pills. Well, I can on bologna sandwiches and banana splits. Oh, my goodness. How would you like to have Bertie prepare you a big breakfast every morning? Bacon, eggs, hot biscuits. Mm, yeah. yeah. And a big dinner every night. Thick chops. Juicy roasts, two-inch steaks. What do you say, Petey? <laughs> to heck with the bologna. I'll be over in the morning. <laughs> uh, now you're talking. Is it all right if I bring the parrot? No, I don't think you better. Aunt Hattie doesn't like parrots, and you wouldn't want anything to happen to the bird. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. If we were to take a popularity poll of vegetable courses, chances are the winner would be broccoli or asparagus with hollandaise sauce. And no wonder, nothing nicer could happen to these tender green vegetables than the smooth, creamy sauce we call hollandaise. But perhaps you don't enjoy this tempting combination as often as you'd like because, as even the most accomplished cook will admit, hollandaise sauce is a tricky thing to make. Well, here's good news. Now you can make hollandaise sauce quickly and easily. Hollandaise sauce that can't fail. You do it with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip, the famous salad dressing with the lively, teasing flavor. The very special flavor that no other salad dressing has. Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe. One that combines the qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. It's blended carefully, thoroughly with special craft beaters to give it the creamiest, smoothest texture you ever saw. 
Now, to make your never-fail hollandaise sauce, you put one cup of Miracle Whip into the top half of a double boiler with hot water in the bottom half and heat the Miracle Whip for ten minutes without boiling. Then just add two tablespoons of lemon juice and mix it in well. That's all there is to it. Try it soon. It's a good idea to get the quart jar of Miracle Whip when you buy, so you'll have plenty on hand for all the cool, colorful salads you like to serve these days, too. Remember, it's America's favorite salad dressing, the one and only Miracle Whip. Get back to the great Gildersleeve. His dear old Aunt Hattie came to stay a few days, but now it appears that, like the plumbing, she'll become a permanent fixture. Mm. Getting desperate, the water commissioner has decided to capitalize on Aunt Hattie's dislike of noise and strangers. I've invited Peavy to stay with us a few days, Bertie. Yes, sir? We'll put him in the den. Yes, sir. He's bringing his parrot, too, Bertie. Come again? I say he's bringing his parrot. That's what I thought you said. Where does the parrot sleep? Yeah, we'll put the parrot in the hall next to Aunt Hattie's room. I was hoping you wouldn't put that bird in my room. Oh, no. Oh, this birdie would fly the coop. <laughs> <laughs> birdie ain't carrying on no conversations with no parrot. Well, he can talk to Aunt Hattie. Yes, sir. Mr. Gilsleeve, you think Miss Hattie's going to like all this company? <laughs> oh, you got another idea. You bet. You know how Aunt Hattie hates people and noise. Oop. What's that? That's Piggy's jalopy. Oh? He and Leroy just drove it in the backyard. Gee. I wonder Aunt Hattie doesn't say something about this. She would, but she went to market for some eggplant and spinach. Oh, do we have to have that again, Bertie? I promised Peavy steak. Well, I ain't planning all the meals now, you know. Yeah, I know. Hi, Aunt. Hello, Leroy. Piggy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hi, Bertie. Hello, Piggy. Aunt Piggy drove his jalopy over. I heard it. We're putting on a new horn. What do you think of it? Yeah, look. I got it hooked up to a dry cell. Yeah, put it here on the dining room table, Piggy. Okay. Yeah, do, do you have to bring it in the house? We want to work on it. Make it louder. Yeah, you can hardly hear it now. See? Oh, my goodness. Sounds like the Chicago Stockyards. <laughs> How about that, huh? How about that? <laughs> yeah, that's really great. Oh, what a loud <laughs> boy. Yes, sir. It's a good thing Miss Hattie ain't here. Yeah. Say, Piggy, how'd you like to stay for dinner? Oh, what are you going to have? Probably eggplant and spinach. I got to go home. It... No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're going back to steak tonight. I'll stay. Oh, boy! Piggy, why don't you come over and spend a few days with Leroy? <laughs> I stayed with him one night, and you nearly blew your top. You, well, you shouldn't have been roller skating in your room. <laughs> but this time, it's different. Okay, but, but I'll have to go home for my trombone lesson. What the heck? Bring your trombone. <laughs> Then all fixed up, Mr. Gilsleeve. Yeah, fine, Bertie. Peavy should be here any minute. Have you told Miss Hattie he's coming? No. I want it to be a surprise. Hmm? Once Peavy's here, she can't do anything about it. No, sir. Rock Morton. Yes, Aunt Hattie? You had a phone call when you were out. Oh? From your boss. Matt Williger? He wondered why you weren't in your office this afternoon. Well, uh, where were you? Uh, I worked two nights in a row. Well, uh, uh, well, the mayor was quite bossy. As a matter of fact, I don't like his attitude. Yeah, I know. And if he calls again, I may just have to tell him in no uncertain terms. No, Aunt Hattie, let's not get me in trouble with the mayor. Uh, somebody's at the door, Chuck Martin. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gilmer, please. Bring your bag right in. Thank you. Um, who are you, the rush salesman? No, ma'am, I'm Mr. Peavy. Yeah, Aunt Hattie, this is an old friend of mine. Oh? 
Yes. Didn't I tell you he was staying with us a few days? You most certainly did not. Yeah. Well, his wife's out of town, so he asked if he might stay over here. Mr. Jonas Neal, it wasn't exactly mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Buck Martin, uh, didn't you explain to Mr. Peavy that you already have a house guest? No, not yet. Uh, you could come into the den, Peavy, and make yourself at home. Well, I, I left the parrot on the porch. Parrot? Oh, good heavens. Well, Mr. Peavy couldn't leave it at home, Aunt Hattie. Well, I hope it doesn't talk. <laughs> oh! Oh, what was that? That's your parrot. Very talented. Uh, Bertie! Yes, sir? Will you get the parrot off the porch? Yes, sir. I'm telling you, he's whistling the gal. <laughs> Do you people have to shout? Oh, sorry, Aunt Hattie. Uh, should I show you to your room, Peavy? Very well. well. Uh, now, now, don't go running off, Dr. Martin. Uh, what do you mean, Aunt Hattie? Uh, well, I, I think I should know a little more about somebody I have to stay in the same house with. Well... Mr. Peavy is our neighborhood druggist and a member of the Jolly Boys Club. You've heard me speak of the Jolly Boys. Uh, Is that the noisy group that sings? Uh, I can prove I'm a member. There is a tavern in the town. Uh, I'll take your word for it. Very well. Don't roll in there, Miss Gill, please. No, just Peavy singing. Oh, this is getting to be the noisiest house. Oh. Oh, what's that? Piggy and Leroy must be back. Oh, oh good heavens. Who's Piggy? Uh, little friend visiting Leroy. Another visitor? Hi, Alf, Mr. Peavy. Leroy. Hello, my boy. Hi, Mr. Peavy. Hello, Piggy. Aunt Hattie, I want you to meet Piggy. Piggy who? Piggy Branks. Hi, Aunt Hattie. How do you do? Hi, hey, Mr. Peavy, you moved in too? M- me and your parrot. <laughs> More the merrier. <laughs> yeah, how about that? We got three peas. Piggy, Mr. Peavy, and the parrot. How about that, Aunt Parrot? Uh, I mean, Aunt Hattie. (laughs) I think I'll go to my room. Oh, I, I don't understand this house. That parrot even talked back to me. Oh, well, perhaps today will be better. Good morning, Miss Hattie. Oh, I don't know, Bertie. No, ma'am? That parrot must have been in the Navy. Oh, yes, ma'am. That bird's seen a lot of duty. He was whistling out the window all night. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's it's not amusing, Bertie. Uh, Mr. Peavy was very presumptuous in bringing it over. Well, Mr. Gillsleeve likes Mr. Peavy. Well, Throckmorton likes too many people. He's just a soft touch. Yes, ma'am. Oh, what are you doing with those eggs? I'm coddling eggs for Mr. Peavy. Well, uh, why doesn't he have them scrambled like the rest of us? Well, you're the only one that likes them scrambled. Oh, that's the only way to eat eggs. Oh! Oh, oh that horn again. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy and Piggy are putting it on the car. Oh, that Piggy. Why Throckmorton tolerates him in this house, I'll never know. No, ma'am. Oh, everybody comes and just stays. Yes, ma'am. Oh, sometimes. Sometimes I feel sorry for Throckmorton. Everybody takes advantage of him. Where is he? Oh, he's gone to the office. He's got an early call from the man. Now, take that snippy mayor. I just know he exploits Throckmorton because he's easygoing. Oh, he's easygoing, all right. Well, Well, I'm leaving this house. But before I go, I'm going to do Throckmorton a favor. You are? I'm going down and give that mayor a piece of my mind. Uh Uh-oh. The Water Department, Commissioner Gildersleeve speaking. Miss Gildersleeve, this is Bertie. Oh, yes, Bertie? I've been trying to call you, but your phone's been busy. Oh, well, I've had a busy morning. I thought you'd like to know Miss Hattie's going home. Well. But before she goes, she says she's going to do you a favor. Oh, yeah, fine. What is it? She says she's going to tell off the mayor. Oop. Where is she, Bertie? She's probably in his office now. Zeke, goodbye, Bertie. You know, I've got to stop her. She wrecked me. Oh, why does Aunt Hattie have to take everything? 
morning, Mr. Mayor. I said to myself, I'm going to take this matter into my own hands. My good woman, if you'll excuse me, I'm very busy. Uh, I won't excuse you until you answer a few questions. Oh, well, what is it? I suspect that you, like everybody else in Summerfield, take my nephew, Throckmorton, for granted. I beg your pardon? Do you know that he worked at the water department every night this week when he might have been home with his Aunt Hattie? Well, he tried to impress me by claiming he was going to work one night. There you go, belittling. He worked every night. He really did? He has to work. You should see the mouths he has to feed. Why, the poor man's at his wit's end. Uh, I've suspected that for some time, yeah. but... Uh... <laughs> he won't speak up for himself, so I'm going to. Throckmorton deserves a raise. Well, uh, I... I... Uh, Mr. Mayor! Yes, Kildersley? Your Honor, don't believe a word she says. Very well. What did she say? She just about talked me into giving you a raise. Oh, The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. If you want to shine as a salad cook, remember, the little extra touches are important. The capers you sprinkle over the chicken salad, the chopped nuts on the fruit salad. But, of course, most important is your choice of the right salad dressing. That's why we suggest you choose Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip salad dressing has a flavor that millions of folks agree is just right. Lively, teasing, perfect. Try it. Enjoy the most delicious salads you've ever tasted. Salads made with the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Well, there. I gave your bags to the porter, Aunt Hattie. Oh, thank you, Fox Martin. Come again. I will. I had a fine visit. Good. And uh, I would have gotten you a raise from the mayor if you hadn't barged in when you did. Oh, yeah, yes. Well, it's my fault, Aunt Hattie. I, I appreciate everything, though. Believe me. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Throckmorton. Now behave yourself. Well, she's gone at last. <laughs> yeah, she's a good old soul. But, oh, my, what a relief. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. Yeah, Mayor Twilliger. Uh, what are you doing down here at the railroad station? You, well, I... Uh, Gildersleeve, I've been thinking about that Aunt Hattie of yours. Yo? Outspoken, refreshing, different. I admire her pluck. You do? Uh, Mrs. Twilliger would enjoy knowing her. Why don't you bring her over to dinner this evening and we'll talk about that race. My race? Stop the train! Aunt Hattie, jump! Oh, good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Stan Farrar, Noreen Gamill, Johnny McGovern, and Dick Legrand. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Food Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What goes into your favorite sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard... Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft prepared mustard.
The National Safety Council reminds you that speed kills. So take it easy. Speed is involved in more than one out of every three fatal accidents. Remember this when you're tempted to get there in a hurry. Don't drive like lightning and crash like thunder. To drive safely, simply use common sense when you're at the wheel. Simple safety precautions save money and lives. Tonight, here, you bet your life with Groucho on the NBC Radio Network.